The concept of, of Minecraft this year is to show the qualities of craft and the potentials by showing craft through processes and material. And we, are, we don't only show the, the works and pieces, but we also want to tell the stories behind the processes. One of the biggest challenges, the real napkin is supposed to be 140 by 140. This napkin is, uh, as you see, it, it has like a proudness. It stands tall and it's, uh, it's definitely not a weak little fold. Imagine if a napkin being 140 by 140. It won't easily stand this, this strong and, and, and proud. It will be more like a weak, soft uh, piece of fabric and that's not good enough. That's not what I want. So I've been looking into all kinds of um, traditional uh, ways of, of making the fabric more stiff. In Milan, uh, Danish crafts offer the professional craftspeople and designers a common platform. And uh, when we go to Milan with an exhibition like, like Minecraft, uh, we also ask a curator to compose uh, an exhibition that in the best possible way uh, draw the picture and uh, tell the story that we want to tell about Danish craft to the rest of the world. When you set up the team for the Minecraft exhibition, we have focused on, uh, you could say, a limited number. Uh, all years it has been about 12 uh, craftspeople, because we want uh, to highlight not only the best, but also give time and space for each craftsperson to have a manifestation of what they actually are capable of doing. And uh, this year they have been challenged on material and process, but not only that, uh, several of them has been challenged to go out of their security box, you could say, that they have been asked to work in a different material, still with definitely a very recognisable touch. Usually I do porcelain figurines. Um, for this exhibition I have taken the challenge of um, creating something almost on ceramic. Uh, so the legs will be the only ceramic uh, part of the, the chair. I'm used to do everything myself. Um, so I also did the chair myself. Uh, I, well, can we say that I have learned a lot? <laughs> I always uh, work with knit, like traditional hand knit, like, you know, like the classic, like um, straight for it. There's no special effects or no holes and because it gives the atmosphere of like grandma knit. It's not a closet that you can pr produce afterwards, but maybe you can produce some of it or maybe get an idea to make another kind of, of a furnace out of it. I've chosen to, uh, to work with the uh, with a very ordinary material that you'll find in, in almost any upholstery furniture, any sofa. But uh, it's a kind of material that you rarely see because it's often covered in textile. But here I cut the foam into long stripes and then I use it to weave uh, the foam uh, around the solid structure, the frame of the furniture. More than ever, products and processes are dependent on skilled and intelligent craftspeople who can add material value to a product. 
the added value is when the right material interacts with the right form at the right time and that really makes a great difference to the lifetime of a product. So you could say that materials become very valuable in the hands and the minds of the craftspeople and they are actually capable of changing our material attitude. One of our ideas or hopes is to kind of awake the interest of manufacturers around the world and to get them interested in, in sharing our vision of new good future products of design that maybe are a little bit better if they use the competences that lie within craft.